Hey there, my creative friends. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you've never been here before, let me know in the comments. I would absolutely love to say hi. Today I have six neutral farmhouse Easter decor DIYs, including a 22 inch LED light up lantern. So without further ado, let's get into these Dollar Tree DIYs. DIY number one is this gorgeous textured vase with a leather handle. You'll need a glass vase from the Dollar Tree. You could choose any size that you would like. And then I take some white chalk paint. Honestly, you could probably use just about any type of paint. And then add a few tablespoons of baking soda and mix it up. You want to add enough baking soda to where you get a paste type texture. You Like basically a really thick, thick paint. I want this to have a little bit of an off-white color to it. So I add a little bit of antiquing wax. You could use brown paint or any color that you would like. I absolutely love doing this technique. It really gives kind of a cement look to the vase, and I'm sure you could do this to a lot of other things as well, but for the first coat, you're just going to take a paintbrush or a sponge brush and give it a nice good coat. Once your first coat is dry, you can take a sponge, whether it is a sponge from the Dollar Tree or just one that you have underneath your cabinet, rip a piece off, and then start sponging your paint all over the vase. I like to have a good amount on my sponge and then I will kind of dab it all over the vase, spreading it out. So with Dollar Tree's 25 cent price increase comes better things. Like this Dollar Tree faux leather, you actually get a decent amount of this, about 20 inches. I also think it is a very good quality for $1.25. I cut two pieces of the leather about eight inches long and a quarter of an inch wide and then I use my glue gun to make a loop. This piece of leather will be the handle, so you want it to be a little bit thicker and you want to be able to see the leather on both sides. Then add some hot glue into the center of the loop and push it down, making a strip so you can see the leather on both sides. To add the handle, I add a dab of hot glue at one end of the leather strip and then I glue it upside down at the top of the base and then bend it backwards. It's easier definitely to watch than it is to explain. And then glue that bottom piece down where the curve on your vase is. I was actually going to add two handles to this vase, but I decided against that and instead I went ahead and took that other piece of leather and I wrapped it around where the vase kind of curves in at and I hot glued it in place. For the little round embellishments that's on the leather of the vase, I use these Dollar Tree sticky dots. I paint them white and then give them a coat of the burnt umber apple barrel paint and I like to paint them white first so that whatever color you're painting them really sticks out. These are already sticky, but I like to add a little bit of hot glue to make sure they really stay in place. And then I just add them right to the ends of the leather and this DIY is done. This vase is absolutely gorgeous and no one would know that you made it using Dollar Tree items. I absolutely love the texture of this vase. Let me know down in the comments what you think as well. I also want to take a second to apologize for the lighting in some of the clips. We are redoing the craft room, so some of the lighting is not the best. On to DIY number two, which is this Easter egg cloche. For this, you'll need a pack of the foam Easter eggs, some jute twine from Dollar Tree you can get in the automotive section, and a Dollar Tree mop head. I have noticed Dollar Tree has two different mop heads and one has darker strands than the other so I used the one with the darker strands. You could use the lighter strands if you would like, I just liked the color of the darker one. Pull a few strands out of the mop head and then start pulling that strand apart. You will get four strands from one mop head string. And I take that Dollar Tree twine and the mop head strand and I add it to the egg by placing a little bit of hot glue to the top and then using a Dollar Tree silicone makeup brush so I don't burn my fingers, which that is an amazing hack. Whoever came up with that is a genius. And you're just going to hold the pieces in your fingers so that they stay in the position that you want and then just wrap the egg. It is literally as simple as that. Once your mop head strand has run out, all you have to do is hot glue it down and then take another mop head strand and I like to kind of pinch them together on the hot glue and then you just continue wrapping. Once 
Once you have the egg completely wrapped, snip off the excess and look how adorable this egg turned out. And for the next egg, I'm just using one of the strands for, from the mop head. And again, it is just as simple as wrapping it around the egg, hot gluing it down, and then taking another strand and placing it where it ended and continue wrapping. When you're wrapping the egg, some of the mop head strands will have like these little fuzzies on them, so I just take my scissors and cut those off. For the third egg, I just wrap it with the jute twine that you can get in the automotive section. They do have some in the craft section. This one just has a different color that I like. Once you have your eggs all wrapped, you will need a Dollar Tree cloche, and this is actually the smaller one. I found one of the larger ones the very next day after doing this craft. You will also need a candle holder and I spray painted the candle holder and the base to the cloche with this Rust-Oleum chalk paint spray paint. Then using a chippy brush and my antiquing wax, I distressed the candle holder as well as the base to the cloche. You could use brown paint or black paint, really whatever you would like as well. Once you have both pieces painted or distressed how you would like, add some hot glue to the top of the candle holder and then add that to the bottom of the base to the cloche. This would also be just a really cute stand as well. Using this absolutely gorgeous floral pick from the Dollar Tree, I cut a few of the greenery pieces off and then I hot glue, ugh, hot glue it to the inside of the circle on the base of the cloche and you want to keep it on the inside so that you can still put that plastic part on top. If you have any stubborn little pieces that might get in the way, just take your glue gun and hot glue them down. You could also use something like moss at the bottom of this. This would be really cute as well. I was going to do that, but I thought that the moss and the color of the eggs were just a little bit too close together. To add a little pop of color, I used those little purple flowers that were on that same pick we just used, and I just hot glue them right to the greenery. I am absolutely loving how this is turning out. Then to add the eggs, I just add a little bit of hot glue onto the bottom of them and place them into the greenery. And I place two on the back and then I kind of push the third one that's going to be in the front down as I hot glue it down so that it is a little bit lower than the other two eggs. Then you can add the plastic piece to the cloche and if you have any little pieces of greenery that get in the way, just kind of slide them out of the way with your finger and that will push right down and attach on. Have you guys seen the new metal ribbon at Dollar Tree? It is absolutely amazing. They have five or six different styles and you get four and a half feet. For this project, the metal is a little bit shinier than I would like it to be, so I take some of my antiquing wax. You can use a burnt umber, brown paint for this as well, and I give it a distressed look, almost like it is rusted. To add the metal ribbon so that you can take that clear plastic part off if you would like, I just wrap the ribbon around the cloche, add some hot glue onto the clear plastic down by the base, and then hot glue that ribbon to the plastic. Then I add a little bit more hot glue and glue the other piece down as well. For the twine ribbon, I'm using a ribbon out of this ribbon pack that I got off of Amazon. I will have this linked down below in the description. Dollar Tree also carries twine ribbon, but sometimes it can be hard to find. On the side where I glued the metal ribbon down, I add some hot glue down on the base and then wrap that ribbon right around, hot gluing it into place. And here's how this DIY turned out. I think this is just too cute. I absolutely love the color. The neutral is so in this year. And I actually want to make a bunch more of those eggs to put in a basket with my carrots that are coming up next. And here's those carrots I was talking about with DIY number three. For this DIY, I used a pack of the larger carrots from Dollar Tree on the skewer stick. I removed the skewer stick and the paper greenery at the top. Then using that same mop head with the darker strands, I pull a few of those mop head strands out. These carrots are kind of like how we did the eggs, and I actually got the egg idea from the when I did the carrots. So you're just going to add some hot glue onto the carrot and then start adding those mop head strands. Again, once you have ran out of the mop head strand, you're just going to hot glue that end down and then add another mop head strand, pinching those two ends together. This really makes it have a nice seamless look. And then all you have to do is just keep wrapping until you have the carrot completely covered.
For the second larger carrot, I used the Dollar Tree nautical rope, and this is the 9.5 feet. And at the end, I know they can kind of unravel, so a little tip is just to add some hot glue right to the center and then twist those pieces together. Then what I do is add some hot glue going down the nautical rope and adding those mop head strands to the nautical rope to where it is kind of making the two ropes into one. I tried doing this carrot the same way I did the egg when I added the nautical rope and the mop head strand, but it was just a little bit harder because the strands are bigger, so I needed them to stay in place, so gluing them together really helped out. I also only used about a little bit less than half of the nautical rope. Then again, just start hot gluing the rope going all the way around the carrot until you have the carrot completely covered. For the smaller carrots, I use this four pack of carrots from the Dollar Tree and don't worry, I'm going to totally speed this up so you don't have to sit through me wrapping more things. So you're just going to wrap one with the nautical rope, then wrap another carrot with the mop head strands. And then for the third carrot, I go ahead and take some of the mop head strands apart and wrap it around like we did that egg with the jute twine as well. The fourth carrot I didn't show because all I did was just take that Dollar Tree jute twine and wrap it. You can kind of see it in the back. Then add some Dollar Tree greenery, whichever greenery you would like, and these carrots are done. At this point, you can take them and put them on a tiered tray or place them wherever you would like in the house, but I wanted to make a little basket for them to go into, so I used one of these wire Dollar Tree gold baskets and I simply painted it white and added the carrots and this is how they turned out. Oh my goodness, I am in love with these carrots. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I think these are just adorable. And I also added a little bit of burlap into the basket and it just gave it this more of a rustic farmhouse vibe. Or like I said, you could place them around the house as little accent pieces. DIY number four is this absolutely beautiful 22 inch LED light up lantern. For this DIY, you will need two of the same size shadow box like decor pieces from the Dollar Tree and I just push on the hanger on the inside to remove it and then I paint both of those pieces white with my white chalk paint and these are going to be the top and the base to your lantern so you want to make sure they have a nice full coverage. For the sides, I'm going to be using these Jenga block pieces and I just take some wood glue and hot glue because you want this to be very sturdy and Dollar Tree does carry wood glue as well. And all I do is glue eight pieces together and then I do eight of those rows. Once you have eight of those long Jenga block pieces, I use some more wood glue and hot glue and I glue two of those long pieces together. Gluing both of these together is going to make the lantern so much more sturdy. I want these side pieces to look like they are all one wood piece, so I take some Dollar Tree lightweight spackling and I fill in all the little creases on the Jenga blocks. Once I have all the cracks filled in, I give all of those pieces a nice coat of white chalk paint. Then using one of the shadow boxes as the base, you're going to add some wood glue and hot glue to one of the longer pieces and add that right to the corner. And you're going to repeat this with all four of those long wood pieces. Now add some hot glue and wood glue to the top of those wood pieces and then all you have to do is slide the second shadow box right over those. I absolutely love how big this thing is and look how much space you have on the inside. Next, I use some paint stir sticks, which I will have linked down below, and I just hold them up to the lantern, mark where I need to cut, and then use a Dollar Tree, what is that, box cutter, there you go, box cutter to cut them down. Then I just use some white chalk paint and give them all a nice coat of white chalk paint, and I do end up painting the other side. Obviously, I didn't think about it here, but once I started to attach them, like I'm doing here, that's when I realized, wait a minute, you can see the other side, obviously. So I just hold them up and attach them with some hot glue. And here you can kind of see that you can definitely see the other side. And so I did go in and paint those. Dollar Tree carries these smaller shadow boxes all year round for every season and I just painted one white, added some hot glue and hot glued it to the top of the lantern making sure that it was nice and centered. If you have any running hot glue, make sure you wipe that off right away. 
To give this a nice, really good finished look, I use that Dollar Tree spackling again and I fill in any of the cracks that are on the lantern. I got the inspiration for this lantern from She's So Crafty and she used these party bowls from the Dollar Tree. You can find them in the party section and they come in a four pack and I just painted one with my white chalk paint. This did take about two coats to get it completely covered and then I used my hot glue gun and placed the hot glue on the inner lip of the bowl and then I add it right to the top of the lantern. Then again I use that Dollar Tree spackling and I fill in any of the holes or cracks. For the hanger I'm using these Dollar Tree shower curtain rings and I found them in the white but I ended up painting it white anyways because I wanted it to have more of a flat paint look and not that shiny plastic. So if you can't find the white ones don't worry just go ahead and paint one. Then I just took my scissors and cut off the little clippy part so that you can use these Dollar Tree little wood cubes and I just used one of them, painted it white and then added some glue onto it one side and then onto the direct other side so I could kind of earmuff I guess you could say that shower curtain ring. Now all you have to do is add some strong glue and then glue that little handle right to the top of the bowl. Now I still wouldn't necessarily pull on the lantern by the handle it was more for a decorative look. To get this lantern to light up, I'm using one of these Dollar Tree LED push lights and they do have a sticky back, but I really want this to stay on nice and strong. And don't worry, you can still change out the batteries because you only have to unscrew that white part. So I just add some hot glue on to the back and then place it at the top, but underneath the bottom of the lantern. And now you have this large lantern you can decorate however you would like. I of course added that absolutely stunning textured vase, some fairy lights and greenery down at the bottom, and some Dollar Tree florals. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you guys this enough, this lantern is absolutely gorgeous at night and I placed a water bottle next to it so you guys could also see the difference in size. And to me, one of the best parts about this lantern is it only cost $8.75 to make. DIY number five is this adorable Easter egg farm crate and eggs. For this DIY, I'm using four of the Dollar Tree wood pallets and I removed all the stickers and then took a bead of hot glue down that inner wood piece on the corner and then added the other Dollar Tree pallet. Then I just hot glued the other pallet on to the other side and then glued the final pallet making a little crate. For the bottom of the crate, I'm using one of these long wood pieces from the Dollar Tree. They usually have like a twine hanger at the top and I just place it at the bottom of the crate and mark where I need to cut it, use a Dollar Tree box cutter, and then just bend it back and forth and that piece will snap off. You could also just use a Dollar Tree poster board or any other Dollar Tree sign and cut it down to size. Sand down any rough edges and then hot glue your little bottom right to your crate. For the little round details, I'm using the larger Dollar Tree sticky dots and I place them on each corner on all four of the palettes. You could paint your crate whatever color you would like, but I chose white just because it kind of goes with my decor. And I use my white chalk paint and give the whole crate a nice good coat, making sure I really cover up those dots as well. At this point, if you do not like to distress your projects, you could leave it just like this. I used that same Dollar Tree wood plank that we used for the bottom of our crate and I just cut down a smaller size for the sign at the front of the crate. Sand off any of the rough edges and then I painted the sign using my white chalk paint. Just like I said previously, you do not have to do any distressing, but I like to have my stuff distressed, so I am doing it in my type of style. So like I always tell you guys, do it how you like it in your style. I'm just here to show you guys some ideas. Then I also distress the little crate using a chippy brush, making sure I really pay attention to those little sticky dots. 
I used my Cricut Maker to cut out this adorable Easter egg farm image and I transferred it right onto the sign. You can get this off of Design Space or I could send you a printable if you would like. You could also do a decoupage on the front or even write something really cute as well. For the inside of the crate, I used some Dollar Tree Spanish moss. I placed a piece of the Dollar Tree floral foam inside, kind of as a space filler, and then I placed some Spanish moss around the floral foam so that you cannot see the floral foam through the cracks in the crate. I add more Spanish moss just because I want it to hang out of the crate a little bit and then using these Dollar Tree eggs, they have them in a few different styles. I place them on a skewer stick. This is how I like to paint them. It is so much easier than trying to hold them and I just paint them with two coats of my white chalk paint. For this next step, if you do not have a Cricut, you could also use Dollar Tree sticky letters, a paint pen, whatever you would like and then just write some cute words onto the eggs. Place the eggs inside of the crate and this DIY is done. How adorable is this crate and that little bunny on the front? It is just so cute and you could also place the eggs all around the house as well. DIY number six is this super cute bunny trail sign. For this DIY, you will need a rectangle sign from the Dollar Tree. You can use one of these love signs or really any rectangle sign. Remove any of the embellishments in the sticker and then I use a chibi brush and white chalk paint and I do a heavy dry brushing across the whole entire sign. And just like before, if you do not like the distressed look, you can go ahead and paint the entire sign, but I did want the distressed look so I just left some of the background color showing. For the border, I'm using these bamboo sticks that I got off of Amazon. I will have them linked in my Amazon store and a link in the description box. I want the border to be just a little bit darker than the original bamboo stick color, so I'm using a tiny bit of water and literally like a drop of the Apple Barrel Burnt Umber paint, mixing that together and it creates a faux stain. This faux stain technique is seriously one of my absolute favorite little hacks because there is like no dry time or any icky smells or any stickiness from any type of stain. And if you look over at the top of the screen, you can kind of see the difference in the colors. And then all I did was add them to the sign to measure how long I needed them to be, cut them down, and then hot glued the border around the sign. I will also leave the measurements to the bamboo sticks in the description box. These are one of my favorite things to use to make a border. They just turn out so pretty every single time and they're super, super easy to cut as well. But you could also use borders from Dollar Tree signs if you do not want to use the bamboo sticks. Using my Cricut, I cut this adorable bunny trail image that I found on Design Space and I just transferred it right onto the sign. Here's a little window cling hack if you do not have a Cricut. You can use Dollar Tree window clings and add those onto the sign instead of using an image from a Cricut and then just add some Mod Podge over top and it works perfect. Then using that Dollar Tree Jew Twine that you can get in the automotive section, they do again have it in the craft section but I swear they look different and I just like the look and the texture and the color of the twine from the automotive section. And you get it in three rolls. So just using that twine, I wrap it around both ends of the sign, hot gluing it in the back. Then using that really pretty floral piece from Dollar Tree that we used in the beginning of the video, I just cut off the rest of the greenery and I glue the longer pieces down first and I kind of curve them up going towards the center. For the little twine bow, I grab that jute twine and I wrap it around two of my fingers, kind of having them spaced out and I wrap it a good probably about 10 or so times and then I cut off a nice long piece so that I can work with it and push that piece going through the center of your fingers that are spread. When you do that you will create a loop and then you just put the string through the loop and pull. Slide the bow off your fingers, cut off the excess and then fluff out your little loops. I just used my hot glue gun adding a little dab of hot glue on the back of the bow and then placed it in the center of the greenery. Dollar Tree carries these packs of these really cute flowers. They have little pearls in the center and they do have a little sticky dot on the back, but to make sure the flower lasted a really long time, I add some hot glue and place it onto the bow. And here's how this bunny trail sign turned out. Again, I absolutely love how this one turned out as well. You could also add a hanger to the back and hang it on a wall, or you could even place it onto a tiered tray. 
If you're still here at the end of the video with me, I want you to know I truly appreciate you and if you wouldn't mind, please hit that like button if you enjoyed the content you've seen here today. I hope you all enjoyed these DIYs as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you get notified when I post new uploads. And I hope to see you all on the next one. Bye!